I think it's a universal truth that in the home shop, you don't always have exactly the right tool for the job. They make yoke pullers for these, but since I don't have one, I'm using a steering wheel puller. I also don't have the special puller for getting this pinion seal out. That method worked well in the rear one, but the front one's giving me more trouble. Let's try getting the pinion out first. This is supposed to be a slip fit. It never is. Got these races knocked out. It's kind of deep down inside the differential, so couldn't really show that very well. If you saw the first video where I started tearing this down, it's the same story with the races. There's, eh, they're not long for this world. There's a lot of discoloration, some pitting. So it's the right call to pull this apart and replace them now. Same thing though, bearings look okay, but we'll replace it all. The shims that come out of this thing are really important to keep track of because that's what sets the pinion depth. If you don't have the tools to measure the pinion depth, the easiest way is to just put back in the same amount of shims that came out. They do get kind of beat up not when you knock the race out. So fresh shims, but just measure each one and replace them with the same thickness of shim pack. Anytime in this video I say I'm using the same shims, that's what I mean, same thickness, just fresh shims. I knocked up a uh, one size fits some bearing race driver. It's just a 15 degree angle on the end of a hunk of aluminum. And now we come to kind of a crux here, which is taking this bearing off. We're gonna go on a little adventure through some bearing pullers. Now I already pulled the bearing off of one side of the carrier. I used one of these jobbies. The downside of this is you end up destroying the bearing in the process. You rip the cage off and then all the rollers fall out. Then you can grab the inner race around that little lip and pull it off. But on something like this, especially with this top one that we're going to be getting on and off to adjust the shims here, you don't really want to destroy that bearing. And so when Vivor reached out to me and said they wanted to send me something to use in one of my videos, I said, I could really use a pinion and carrier bearing puller. Full disclosure, they sent me this thing for free. There's a link to this product in the description, as well as a couple of discount codes. I want to show you how it works, what it does, give you some thoughts on it. First thought, it's pretty beefy. This thing's got some heft to it. Kind of surprised it didn't come in one of those blow molded clamshell cases that I kind of hate and they seem wasteful. It's got this almost like little display stand with it. It does balance pretty well for carrying it around. It's kind of an odd presentation, but I guess it works. So the way this thing works is you've got a couple of clamshells. Each side of the clamshell is a different size. So you've got four sizes and you just pick the one that fits around your bearing. That looks pretty good. So the key to making this thing work is you need the race for the bearing on there. And then this very stout puller sits down on top of that. And so what you want to do is wind this down. You can get the whole thing, whole stack in there. And then the clamshell slips around the whole thing. You want to wind this up till it's kind of snug. It's not really hitting on that outer race. And then you just kind of snug everything up to the clamshell. And 
then this collar goes over it, and you can finger tighten this. And so if we look at the bearing that I already destroyed, what this is doing is that outer race is pushing the rollers down and in to the inner race, and they're catching on that inner lip, so it's locking everything together. So when you pull it off, the whole thing's going to pull off in one piece, instead of these rollers coming up and out, breaking out and destroying your bearing. And now it's just an issue of picking your favorite implement of destruction. One complaint here is there's really no good way to hold this. I'll just use the impact and you don't need to hold it this tight. I did only finger tighten this. Oh, there it goes. And other than being almost 70 years old and worn out, that bearing is perfectly good. And of course, I don't have anything that's an appropriate size and length for driving the new bearing on, so I'll use the old bearing to get it started. Turns out this does just barely fit my little arbor press. Of course, I didn't want to actually press that old bearing on the whole way, but we'll use this to pull it off. Probably destroy it in the process, but we don't need that one. Actually, it was on, wasn't on there that far, so it came off pretty easily. We'll start out with the shim stack that was on there originally. The only inch pound torque wrench I have is this little beam style one. And it's a quarter inch drive and I have a half inch socket, so... Look guys, I'm making do with what I've got here. With that thing seated the whole way down, I'm getting about 30. Let's go another shim. That's just about 20 there. The factory service manual recommends waiting until you have everything assembled to put the seal in. I think that's good advice. One of the issues with pulling the carrier bearings is this hole here. But that's what this is for. Man, that makes that easy. And again, we got shims. I'm gonna do fresh shims, but I'm gonna start out with the same sizes that were on there. New old stock bearings. We got the new bearing on the other side as well. Same shim stack that was on there originally, but before I put that in, I wanna to try to knock out this oil seal that separates the gear oil from the lube in the knuckles. I just used one of the axle shafts. A little chamfer on the end isn't great for doing that, but it's the right length. Not entirely sure what the function of that little piece is. This is another one where they make a tool for that that I don't have. Keeping the seal going in straight in this little tiny space is really hard. Custom seal driver. The bearing caps need to go back in exactly the same way they came out. Sideways T there, sideways T there. That goes on that one. Upright T, upright T. So checking the ring gear backlash. I'm seeing about 11 thousandths on that. The service manual says it should be 5 to 10. 
So I need to move this this way, and it says change of position of five thousandths it is approximately three thousandths of backlash. So we go five thousandths that way, we should be good. This is where this bearing puller becomes really crucial, is getting these bearings off in one piece so that I can adjust the shim stack without destroying the bearings and having to start over again. Ended up actually moving an eight thousandths shim from one side to the other because that's the smallest one in the shim pack that I got. And I'm seeing right about five thousandths now, so that's good to go. So the end play on this should actually be one to two thousandths. That's about one, so I think that's good to go. We'll go ahead and try to read the tea leaves here a little bit too. A little tricky to see here, but to me that looks like it's making pretty decent contact across the teeth. It looks like on the ones that have transferred it back from the pinion, it's pretty even, so I'm going to call that pretty good. Got to say a huge thank you to Vivor for sending me this bearing puller. It's one of those tools that I really needed to actually get this differential set up properly. I don't really know what else to say about that. It seems like it's pretty well made and it does what it's supposed to do, so I'm pretty happy with it. The nice thing about having run this yoke on and off a few times now is it's a lot easier to get off. The kingpin bearings are pretty well shot, so we'll knock those races out. And the new ones go in. So at this point you want to put the seals on because otherwise you can't get them on you end up taking the knuckle off again. And if all of this looks like I've already put it together once and taken it apart, it has nothing to do with putting it on with the left and right knuckles swapped. Wouldn't do something like that. Probably the easiest way to do this without things falling out is to put the bottom bearing cap on first, put the bearing on that. To set the preload on these bearings, you're supposed to use a scale. It's supposed to be between 12 and 16 pounds to pull it. So we need to take some shims out. <sighs> okay. So even without any shims, it's still not loading those bearings enough. There's this little washer that lives in there. So I think I need a thicker one of those. I found a little scrap that's within nine thousandths of what I need, so just barely a cleanup pass and it should be good. Yeah, okay. I'd say 12. Okay, that's pretty good. Getting these knuckle seals to seed is uh, not very fun. When I pulled these axle shafts out, they pretty much just fell apart. Some pretty gnarly grooves worn in there. So those are pretty well shot. I picked up some new used ones off of eBay. These have the Spicer Universal joint. This is the later style and generally considered an upgrade. The splines look pretty good, but these seal surfaces have seen better days. Let's see if we can do something about that. 
This is one of those setups that's not great, but should 100% work for polishing. I've got some shim stock wrapped around the splines to protect them, and it might be even sitting in between one of the splines, which is why it was running out so much, but for polishing, that doesn't really matter. Certainly far from perfect, but far better than it was. This seal really only separates the gear oil and the differential from the side with the knuckle lube in it. It's probably not worth the effort and cost of doing like a speedy sleeve on there. I like this setup for the shorter one a lot better. Well, there's not a whole lot of doing together. I'll slide it in there. Put a new spindle on this side because the old one was pretty chewed up. It's a bit tighter fit than the original, so I kind of had to pull it on with the bolts. One of the nice features on these hubs is they've got this little notch. It makes it a lot easier to knock the cups out. That seal is a little bit looser of a fit than I would like, so I'm going to use just a little dab of Loctite on it. I think I'll adjust that once it's actually on the, the frame. I can't really get enough torque on this without the axle just lifting up. I haven't decided what I want to do about steering on this. There's a couple of different options. So for now, I'm just going to do a temporary tie rod to make it easier to move around. With the disc brake conversion, I thought I would need a wheel spacer to run the stock wheels, but it turns out these 15-inch wheels are nowhere even close to fitting. You can see there's barely room for the rotor, let alone a caliper. So I'm going to have to sort out some different wheels, but in the meantime, I'm just going to take the calipers off. Probably not going to have this thing going fast enough to need to stop anytime soon. The preload on the wheel bearings is turn it until the wheel starts dragging and then back it off a sixth of a turn. So this washer gets bent up over the outer nut on one side, helps to pre-bend it a little bit.
Michael Lube is one of those things where if you ask five people, you're going to get six answers. You want something that's thick enough that it doesn't leak out through the seals, but thin enough to get into the bearings on the U-joints. I'm using double O grease. It's kind of halfway between grease and oil. When I pulled the Jeep out of the woods, it basically looked like this. It didn't have the locking hubs or the drive flanges or anything on the end here. So I got on eBay, found some used hubs. AVMs are not the greatest hubs in the world, but this is one of those cases where, you know, one of these things you hear about where the box and the listing don't match what it actually is. These are some worn M2s. These are the early style, but the later version. I don't think they changed anything when they went to the M2 designation, but these are the right hubs for this project. Gotta give a big thank you to my Patreons. This is really the first thing I bought with my Patreon money. Do you know those guys get to see these videos without the ads and I do weekly updates on things I'm working on, sort of behind the scenes. These are super greasy and nasty. This one is just totally locked up right now. Let's see if we can get into that. move. Give all of the parts of this a pretty good bath and some simple green. Now I just want to clean and repack these needle bearings. I was pretty proud of myself for not losing any of those little tiny needle bearings, but I have no idea where that last pin went. So I just kind of polished a few thousandths off of a dowel pin. Next thing to do is going to be to push this back outside and get the body in here and start working on that. So if you want to see that, stick around. But before I do that, there's one more thing I want to put on here. I don't know why, but having the grill on here just makes me happy. It's a good thing it's got these studded snow tires on it. <laughs> 